You have seen Shopee's advertisement before, right? I know, they're everywhere. Kind of getting a bit irritating, I get it. But Shopee is actually a very well-run business and they're actually owned by C Limited, which is today's subject. Today, I'm going to show you this company, C Limited. And if you look at the share price alone, wow, fantastic, right, right? Two years ago, it was only at 25 US dollar, but today, it's close to 240 US dollar per share. In today's video, you're going to hear a few parts. First, C Limited's overview. It includes Shopee, of course, but it includes another segment which you may or may not know depending whether you are a gamer or not. The second part, I'll be sharing with you actually the growth trajectory of C Limited. How it has been growing revenues so crazily at such a rapid pace. And last but not least, I'll be sharing with you financial performance of this spectacular company. So if this topic interests you, continue watching on. Hi guys, welcome back. I have a 10-month-old with me and my wife actually buys almost everything from Shopee these days. Wipes, diapers, you name it. So if you look at Shopee, they say shop online anytime, everywhere. And if you look at the portal, they really sell almost everything you need. Clothes, personal care, games, books. So really Shopee has everything inside it. I don't know about you, are you still using Lazada? Leave that in the comment sections below because for my wife, she's migrated all the purchases to Shopee's platform. And if you think of it, if you do online shopping, the next complement that you need in your experience online is actually digital wallets, digital payments, correct? That is why C Limited actually has C money. That is their financial arm of things. And they spread it across Southeast Asia differently. This, this part really helps you understand Shopee Pay as well as Air Pay. So Shopee Pay dominates in Indonesia, Malaysia, Philippines, and Singapore. In Vietnam and Thailand, it's actually Air Pay. So in total, you realize that the numbers for digital wallets is really increasing at a massive rate. There's accelerating adoption. You see the number of users for Indonesia itself, more than 10 million people in fourth quarter 2020. Now Shopee has actually innovated more. They've actually Shopee pay later, which means you kind of have credit line with them. And just, just let you know, there's another company with a pay later program, and that is none other than Grab. So Grab has also a pay later whereby they try to, you know, encourage you to sp spread out your payments, give you credit and stuff. That is for them to earn late fees uh, and promote excessive consumption in my opinion. So if you are a savvy purchaser, please do not use this pay later and then go into default because you're going to pay a lot of fees. And that's where they are actually looking to earn more revenue, like a bank. But the crown jewel of C Limited is none other than is gaming section. Now, if you're a gamer, you definitely know some of the games that I'm about to mention. How about this? The first one over here, you realize Free Fire. This game is highly popular, do you know? Later, I'll show you some stats for it. How about this? Call of Duty Mobile. How about this? League of Legends. Even I as a non-gamer, I've seen League of Legends surfacing on my YouTube before. So these are highly popular games. And if you're a gamer, you definitely know, you know how, how is it trending. But C Limited actually makes a lot of money through gaming and in the next section, I'll show you the financial details. In this section, you're going to hear the growth trajectory of these three arms of C Limited. Let's start with gaming since I mentioned it's the crown jewel. So for Garena Free Fire, let me pull out some numbers for you. It's the top watch game on YouTube for 2020, ranked number 3 with 72 billion views. And if you look at Free Fire, you realize that it's the most downloaded mobile, mobile game for 2020, which is of course the year of COVID, everybody's at home playing games. So I bet they will be making extra profits. Highest grossing mobile game in Latin America and Southeast Asia for fourth quarter 2020. Highest grossing mobile game in India, the world's biggest population, so fantastic. So if you look in terms of January 2021, Garena Free Fire is still number two on that list. So it's still doing well. The previous few data was from 2020. So it's still doing well as of this year. If we look at the numbers itself, quarterly active users. This is Garena, the digital entertainment arm. You realize that fourth quarter comparisons year on year, you realize the growth is tremendous. The quarterly active users have almost doubled. The quarterly paying users have more than doubled. So again, fantastic revenue source. So Garena, that is the part whereby they'll be making a lot of profits. Later, I'll show you numbers for it. So stay tuned. Again, it's taken our team many hours to produce this material for you. So hopefully you understand a bit better if you are interested in C-Limited as an investment. And again, just help me smash the like button so you won't be see valuable content like this. The second arm, of course, is Shopee. Shopee, my wife's favorite again. 
you realize that it's the number one largest online marketplace in Southeast Asia. It's beaten out Lazada, who if I'm not wrong, actually had a head start in building this. They've actually collected funds from Alibaba. And Lazada's kind of got overtaken by Shopee with its massive marketing you know, efforts. That's why we see Shopee's ads all the time. Uh, April 4th, May 5th, they always have a next campaign. Even my son knows about it. So it's fantastic the way they do marketing. Number three on the list, Tokopedia. So again, if you are interested to find out more about tech in Southeast Asia, I'll be touching more on this. Tokopedia is actually looking to do a tie-up with Gojek and they're big in Indonesia. So I'll be covering that. Smash on subscribe if you're keen to find out, you know, on Southeast Asia's business developments. So if we look in terms of e-commerce players, who is ranked number one? This chart shows you everything you need. Thailand, number one, Shopee. Vietnam, number one, Shopee. Philippines, number one, Shopee. Everywhere in Southeast Asia, number one is Shopee. Number two can be Tokopedia, number two can be Lazada, but the number one has always been Shopee throughout Southeast Asia, which means they dominate things. So let me pull up some financial numbers for you to understand the growth rate also. For Southeast Asia, like what I mentioned, they are dominating, correct? For 2018, they only had 581 million in terms of revenue, but guess what? 2020, they've actually more than five times that to 2.8 billion dollars but that's not the full growth story take note of the second name over there latin america huh interesting correct latin america is so far away from southeast asia if you want to fly there i'm not too sure how many direct flights are there but they are really shopee's second arm of growth if you see 2018 it was next to nothing 14 million peanuts but 2020 is grown by 56 times to 790 million dollars in revenue latin america why latin america this article by motley fool c limited is moving towards mercredo libre's backyard who is the dominant player in e-commerce in south america and mercredo libre is you know everything that shopee is doing right now it's just that they dominate south america they have a lot of services over there but c limited is growing into their terrain and fast eating into their space so if we look in terms of e-commerce, that is South America is the place where it's driving this year on year 135% growth in gross orders. So understanding Shopee, understanding Garena, these are the two biggest arms. The third sister is of course the financial arm, C-Money. Why you need to take notice of it is because e-wallets are growing in the next few years. This is a good chart to help you understand how e-wallet penetration is tipping in Southeast Asia. You realize that Singapore is quite mature, but a lot of countries, South America and Southeast Asia, have a lot of countries who are not yet at a full e-wallet penetration, which means C, being big in these two geographical spaces, are going to see a lot of potential growth. Now, C has actually acquired Indonesian banks to gain a foothold in fintech. And of course, if you have been keeping up with news or with this channel, you've seen that they've actually won digital bank in Singapore itself. They went alone. They didn't need to do it with like Grab to partner with Singtel. They went alone and they won the bid. That's how powerful this company is. So again, if you are still not familiar with them, this tutorial, hopefully you have seen how they've executed. And let's move on next to the financial performance. Now in this section, let's talk about financial performances. Now, you know, in the previous video, I've mentioned before, even if you have identified a good company, it is important to only pay fair value. Why? If you overpay for it, you chase after it, then very likelihood the share price performances after you buy is not ideal and you may not be profitable, which is what you want as a shareholder. So for C Limited, let's look at some key numbers. The first is revenue growth. This chart shows from 2019 to 2020, they have more than doubled their revenues just in the span of a year. And if we look in terms of a five-year chart, you realize that the growth rate has been pretty exponential, correct? 2016, they only had a meager $245 million. But as of last year, they've kind of 12x that amount. So the growth rate has been really crazy across the years. But having said that, they've been bleeding money. They've been losing money simply because they've been advertising crazily, building market share, laying the infrastructure to things. And this chart shows you how much money they've been losing. At each point of year, while well, they have expanded, they've been losing more and more monies. In 2020, they've lost more than $1 billion. So this company is losing money, but growing revenues, very similar to Amazon, correct? When it was in its early days, 
it was just conquering market share throwing prices and stuff and you know when it matured then it turned profitable so maybe c limited is following that trajectory but the losses are not throughout its three segments because as you have followed this tutorial you know that they have three arms gaming e-commerce which is shopee as well as financial services and i've actually compiled for you across three years what these numbers are actually looking like the first part digital entertainment you realize that this arm is highly profitable and at an increasing rate also in 2018 they only delivered 69 million dollars in terms of operating income but as of last year 2020 you realize that the operating income has ballooned to more than a billion dollars now that is 15 times growth you know so 2018 69 million 2020 1 billion in terms of operating income profits wow that is that is fantastic now if you are a gamer spending a lot of money well maybe you should cut back because companies are making so much money off you and if you're a shareholder fantastic there are gamers out there willing to spend money and make companies like c highly profitable so if gaming is profitable why is c still bleeding so much money and that's because of these two arms that they have again shopee and the digital financial services Shopee is actually bled for the company more than $1.4 billion and Digital Financial Services bled more than $500 million. Now for Shopee, I guess they're throwing you know, a lot of discounts and stuff to grow revenues, break, break into markets, get market share. For Digital Financial Services, maybe they're laying a lot of the infrastructure, building up the tech platform. So these two arms are losing a lot of money and in particular, Digital Financial Services seem to have lost quite a lot of money in comparison to revenue. So this is really a future growth engine and e-commerce seems to have slowed down in terms of their, their loss rate per revenue growth. So there's a few things that I put up that I'd like to share with you also. Now, is C-Limited a buy today? Leave your thoughts in the comment section below. I'll be keen to hear from you also. Now, the first thing I would like to highlight also is, is last year's profits for gaming a fluke, a one-off or not? There's some things that you know we need to consider also because every game has a lifespan. If you see a previous popular game, Player Unknown's Battleground, PUBG, you realize that it peaked very quickly in 2017, 2018, and then its popularity dropped, which means its owner's ability to milk profits from it kind of dropped also. So the first question is, is 2020 because of pandemic, a one-off such that everybody's playing games at home? Or, you know, Garena, which is the digital entertainment, um, is able to replace this game with newer games down the years to bring on profits. I think it's more of the latter. Hopefully they can continue to do well. And Shopee, if we look in terms of the guidance, this part says a few things. They expect 2021 Shopee to be the biggest revenue driver for the group itself. They will probably overtake the digital entertainment, which is Garena, in terms of its revenue. So that's a big finding. Full year guidance for 2021 seems to be favoring Shopee. That arm really has you know, rooms to grow if it can grow in South Southeast Asia and Latin America. So these are two things to consider. When they turn profit, we're not too sure. But as of now, this company is fantastic in terms of execution. That's something that I can know for sure. Now, you know, in the previous video I mentioned before, in terms of the digital bank, that story that I had was on Kakao Bank, which is the only one that did well in Korea. And even seen that presentation before, I'd like to invite you there because in this upcoming year, we're going to see C Limited building a digital bank as well as Grab plus Singtel. Which of them would survive and do better? My bet is actually on C Limited, seeing how they've been executing their business operations so fantastic. So if you haven't seen that video on digital banks of Singapore, let me invite you there. It gives you a full backdrop what to expect for 2022. And then I'll sign off and see you in that video. Take care and goodbye.